forever. Can we just bless his name? Can we just bless his name? Can we worship him for his worthy of our praise this evening? For you are good and your mercies forever. Oh, for you are good and your mercies forever. Hallelujah. Oh, for you are good and your mercies forever. God. Mercies forever. Hallelujah. Hey, have you are good, and your kingdom be forever. Your power, you perform miracles, and there is nothing. But impossible, and we're standing here only because you made for you move mountains, you cause worse to fall with your power, power. You perform miracles, miracles. There is nothing, there is nothing that's impossible. Standing here, and we stand in you, oh, only, only because you made a way. Oh, you, you made a way. You made a way for me. You made a way. You made, you made a way, God. You, oh, you made a way. Don't know how. Don't know how, but you did it. You Only 
Can never stand before you, oh my God! How great you are! How great you are! How great you are! How great oh, you mountains, are. oh mountains! Oh mountains! Oh mountains! Great as more, strong and faithful. Thank you for the provision of your word. Father, we give you glory. Thank you for this gathering because our gathering tonight is not unto any man, but unto you. Thank you because all flesh we have come unto you today. Thank you for bringing to us at this time your word. Father, we ask that you will anoint my mouth and you will make it like that of a pen of a ready writer and that you will anoint every hear, and you will grant unto them the grace to hear. Let this word bring transformation in our heart and also quicken our mortal body. We receive the spirit of understanding. We receive the spirit of revelation. And we declare that you will grant unto us insight into your word. We give you all the glory and we give you all the praise. In Jesus' name, and everybody say amen. amen. All right, let's take our seat this evening. Good to have everybody in church today. So blessed to have every one of us in this glorious service. I'm going to continue in that teaching series we started uh, more than two months ago from the month of January. And we've been looking at the subject of faith. And we've been trying to consider faith from different angles, from different parts of the scriptures. We've been looking at the word faith from, um, from 
from the lens of the scripture. And also last week, I, uh, we had also the teaching on faith, considering the life of different people in the scripture, how the Bible describes the operation of this faith in their lives. So I'm going to continue in this series today, and I'm going to also keep encouraging us, um, like uh, we always do, that we should try and um, discipline ourselves to go back to our various platforms so that we can, we can, we can listen to those messages again, and they can also be of blessing to us. So today I'm going to be teaching on the message I've titled, Faith to Become. Faith to Become. Somebody say after me, say, Faith to Become. Please let me hear you clearly. All right. I would like you to um, follow me this evening, and I would like you to open your ears and your heart to be able to understand the things that um, I'll be sharing with us in this particular Bible study service. Now, um, while we're doing this study from the book of Hebrews chapter 11, that's the, my anchor scripture, but I just want to refer that, to that particular part. From that Hebrews chapter 11 from verse 2, the Bible says, By faith that the elders obtain a good report. So we know that one of the things that faith delivers unto us is the report. Not just a report, a good report. So faith obtains for us not only good reports. There are other things that faith can also deliver. So listen to these. One major thing that faith will deliver unto you are the things that God or Christ have already made available to us. Faith will not only make available unto you good report, faith will also make available to you all that Christ has done. And these are the things that pertain to life and godliness. So, so there is a faith, there is um, an aspect of faith that helps you to obtain a good report. There is also faith to obtain things which Christ already made available. For example, healing. So faith can be engaged to obtain healing. Why? Because faith can deliver unto you what Christ had already done. Are we together? So it is very important for us to understand that particular point. And let me say this, that the highest expression or the highest demonstration of God's blessing is not in God giving you, which is not bad for God to give you, but it is more in making you. So there is the giving you, there is the making of you. So many of us believers, um, we have, we have, uh, we, the only aspect of faith most of us have been raised with is the aspect of given that faith will give me, faith will give me money, faith will give me a car, faith will give me things. And the truth is, it's not bad. It is not bad. Faith is not only to give you things. Faith, there is a dimension in faith that is to make you. And that is my focus today. And many of us, we have been raised with that mentality that the only thing prayer can do is to give you. No. The only thing church is meant to do is to give you. No. The only thing that I need to engage faith with is to give. It's not to give you things. And um, I'm not saying it will not. It's not only faith can also make you. Faith can also make you. And for me, I believe strongly that the making of you is the highest dimension of the work of faith, the making, the making. So, and you must understand that, you know, you know, when we are talking about faith, you can't talk about faith outside of God's promises, right? Because I told you that you can't exercise faith outside of the word of God. So, one of the sole hymns of God's promises towards us is to make you, if you check all through the scriptures, especially if you look at that, or that, that, that particular chapter in Deuteronomy chapter 28, you will see promises, different promises of the Bible. And let me say this to you, anytime God comes to you 
and brings you a promise, what that promise is going to achieve in your life is to make you. Is to do what? Is to make you. So God is more interested in making you than into giving you. He does not deny us giving us something, but is more interested in making you. You will hear the scripture says, I will make you the head. In that same Deuteronomy, he say, I will give you the head. When is not a fish? He said, I will make you the head. I will make you. You always say that word, make, when it comes to the promise of God. Look at that verse 13, 28. He said, and the Lord God said, commanded, he said, I will make you the head and not the tail. And the Lord will make you. The Lord will make. Look at that word make. So God is more interested in making. And when we talk about the, when you use the word making, it means there is a process attached. Are we together? So just like a student, an ordinary boy, an ordinary boy, after going through the um, primary school education, the junior school, edu secondary school education, the secondary school education, then writes work and apply to study medicine, it is expected that such a child or such a boy will be subject to different, um, or it will be subject to a process that can eventually produce in him a doctor potentially he can be a doctor. But what will make him a doctor is the process through which you subject that child to. Then at the end of that process, which can involve teachings, lectures, exams, training, practicals, at the end of that or of those processes, then you can say he has eventually become a doctor. Are we together? So what I'm saying this afternoon is that God is more interested in the making of you, not just in giving you. He can give, but the highest dimension or it's higher to operate at the level that God wants to make you. And let me say this, as far as the operations of God is concerned, he's interested in making you. And as, as also as... Um, and as long as you're on this planet Earth, it, this Earth runs by the, pro, the law of process, which is eventually to make you. I know the bakers will understand what I'm trying to say that. You can't just take a flour and just say, this is bread or this is cake. No, you have to subject that flour to a certain process. Then after that is done, it will be Come. That means there is a change in that state. If you ask the baker, what are you doing? She will tell you, I am making or baking a cake. But what she's working on is the flour. So some of us, what you are going through is just a process where God is taking you to. And we must, we must submit ourselves to the making of of God, which a dimension of faith can produce in us. So, faith is not, what I'm trying to say is that faith is not only associated with receiving from God. That's what I'm trying to say. Because many a times when we mention the word faith, we would think that it is only for getting things. No, it's not just for getting things. There is also a part of faith which is for the making of you. Is making of you. God is raising men in this age, but men must submit themselves to be made by God. So, faith is not only associated with receiving. It's not bad to receive. In fact, the Bible says, ask and you shall receive. But you will operate at a lower level when all your response to the realities of God is predicated on asking asking and i'm going to show us from the scripture how god can put you or how you can you can come into this dimension where you can be made so faith is not only associated with receiving but also becoming faith can bring you to that point of becoming many have been so wired to receive it not becoming that's why you see prayer centers filled to the brim. 
sincerely, it's not bad. In fact, many of us, we have now become need-driven believers. What I mean by need-driven believers is the reason many people go to churches is because there is a need in their lives. The reason why many people are praying is because there is a major need. The reason why many people are giving, sowing seed, serving God, if you ask them, they will tell you, if you check them, if you check, if you check the core of the, of the heart, you will notice it's because of what they want to receive from God, which is not bad. But I'm telling you that there is a higher dimension to that, which is you becoming, that you can come before the Lord and say, Father, I'm, I'm serving you for the next three years, not because of what you want to give me, but just because I want to become who you want me to become. And I believe that's a high level of maturity. High level of maturity. So many at times, we have not been trained. We have not been trained to focus our pursuit of God to this point of way becoming. You can, listen, you can receive a gift without your personality being attacked, being changed. You can receive a gift, an item. And when you begin to approach God like that, there will be problem with your personality, but you'll be having things. Father, give me a car. He provides a car, but you are not made. The spirit of waster is still in your life. You have the nature to waste things because you grew up wasting things. So a waster can keep coming to God. Father, give me 100,000, then God supply. Give me this, God supply. And that personality has not been handled because whatever God is given to you without the corresponding attitude to handle it will eventually destroy Ask the prodigal son. The prodigal son was, the problem, Bible says, the guy went to his father. He said, give me of my own portion. And the father did not deny him. Because the law is that if you ask, it shall be given unto you. So the father, he asked the father. The father gave unto him. But he failed to understand that there is, number one, the inheritance, all the items, all the possession. And number two, there's also the personality. So when the personality does not match with that level, there will be a waste. So he went to his father. The father gave him the inheritance. The Bible says he took those, the inheritance, and he went to a far nation, and his personality eventually showed up. He finished most of it. Many of us, some of the things we're asking God for, God has not, you have not seen them, and the reason is because your personality your personality cannot undo that thing. You are asking God to give you a job. Look at that scripture, Luke 15, 13. And not many days after the young son, younger son had gathered up together, he journeyed to a far country. Look at his personality. This is a personality of a man that doesn't want to be under submission. He does not want to take responsibility. He doesn't want to submit on anybody. So the best he could do was to go to a far nation. I just imagine... When, after he collected this, he stayed at home. He would have been under the covering of his father. And let me say this. Number one major steps to know that someone is about to ruin his life is that he will withdraw from the covering that he has subjected himself to over the years. Then that covering will be like, it can't, it can't really cover me again. Uh, that pastor cannot pass on me again. You just feel that you are now bigger. That church cannot provide for me. My parents are now too old. They can't talk to me again. And my husband is not, um, he does, he does, that was the time he used to have money. Now he doesn't have money. He can't correct me. No. The first thing is that they will move away. And that's why I'm always afraid when I see people moving away from where they, are, where they used to be. Especially when they are in the process of making. And the Bible says he journeyed to a far country. A place without identity. And there, and there he wasted is what? His possession. With what? With prodigal living. That is his person. If he had stayed at home, that personality would have been handled. Verse 14 now says, but when he had spent all, that's when he now came to himself. And that is, that is the level his personality can handle. His personality can only handle level zero. But his father brought him to level nine. Until he withdraw from level nine back to zero, he will not be normal. That is how many people are. Give them on the, when they don't have hundred thousand, when they have like five thousand, they will be very prudent. They will be very conscious that ah, there is money. Ah, I don't have more money. Let me manage you. But put into their hands hundred thousand, they become imbalanced. Until that hundred thousand come back to five thousand, they won't be. That means the problem is not the provision. The problem is the personality. So there is the provision. There is the personality. Faith can bring about the provision. 
And faith can also make for the personality. What I'm saying is that personality is actually, is actually higher than provision. Is higher. Don't, don't never get to a point, a level in your life you have not been made for. If you get to that point you have not made for, you will come down. There will be crisis. There will be problem. So many singles, they want to get married. Pastor, the guy is not coming. Oh God, go and settle down. Go and settle to be made. To be made. Many people are looking for a job. A job you are not trained for. A job you have not been wired for. A job. Why do you think, why do you think employees, they don't only recommend with your certificate. They will tell you, um, vacancy. Um, a, a, give me something now. A teacher is needed. That is your academic qualification. There is also what we call marketplace qualification. That is your worth based on your experience in that space. They will now tell you that five years working experience because it has been believed that for this kind of job we want to do, there is a making that you should have been exposed to for you to be able to undo. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? That's why you will notice, especially in this part of the world and in Africa, we don't really have good leaders. One of the reasons is because they, their personality has not been worked on. They can have the money for campaign. They can have the money to run the election. They can have the connection. They can belong to, the thriving, to a thriving party. But their personality, their personality... So many of us, that explains the reason why many of us, we have not been able to handle certain blessings of God. Why? Because we have not been made. Many people today, they fall in the class of this guy, the prodigal son. The problem with the prodigal son is not the provision. The problem is with the personality. As a loving father, he will always want to give you. God always wants to give you. Lord, I need, a op I need this open door. God wants you to travel out. But not God knows that this is your attitude. This is your attitude. Or this is your personality. The moment you move out of Nigeria, the real you will come out. Many of us, we cannot survive in a land of, for five years where nobody knows you, nobody is watching after you, and you can still be fervent to your spiritual life. How many of you can survive in a foreign nation? How many husbands can survive? How many wives can survive without their spouse and they won't look out? It's the making. It's the making. It's the making. A, a, a guy was telling me, you know, last week, he said, Pastor, please, warn my wife. Eh, ah, blah, blah, blah. The guy was just like, I said, what happened? He said, eh, yeah, he will leave me. Ah, blah, blah, blah. I said, I said, I said, I'm not saying it's an excuse, but he, there is a fundamental problem with you that you lack the ability to put your body under control. And for you to utter this statement, something is wrong with your brain. Yes. I told him. I said, something is wrong with your brain. So what happens if your wife is sick? What will you do? Because she's sick, you now start looking out. No. Something God must work in you to make you the you that he wants you to be. That's what I'm trying to tell you. There is a you. Not just the provision. So if you ask God, God, Lord, I want a homer jeep. God said, ah, your salary is 15,000 naira. How will you undo a cow that is V8? V8. That from here to LLA, you have consumed like four liters of oil. And you put on AC. You want to do big boy. That's when with some of these young guys that they just jump up. If you jump up, you come down. Anybody that jumps up is a sign that he has not built his personality. Personality. Your first salary, you know, you were handing 15,000. 15,000. You're using techno. Then suddenly, your salary was increased to 100,000. The following day, you collected your salary. You bought iPhone 14. You are foolish stupidly foolish. Why? The problem is not the provision. The problem is with the personality. Are we together? Alright, so, so you can receive a gift without the change of your personality. If that happens, that personality can destroy the gift. That personality you have not worked on can destroy the gift. That explains the life of the prodigal son. God wants to make you. And one of, the, one of the major channels through which God subjects you to in the making of you is what we call faith. Somebody say after me, say faith. Say after me, say faith. Makes. Yeah. Faith, faith can make you. You can become by faith. 
Let's read and my anchor scripture this evening is in the book of Romans chapter 4. I'm going to read from verse 16 to 21. Romans chapter 4, verse 16. Please, I would like every one of us to look into this scripture. And we are going to read all together. All together. Don't rush it. I would like you to read together because at the end of my teaching, I'm going to ask you a question and the question will be inside these few verses that we are about to read. Romans chapter 4, verse 16. Can we read together loud, bold, and clear? One to go. Therefore, it is of faith that it might be according to grace, uh -huh. so that the promise might be to all the seed, not only to those who are of the Lord, uh -huh, but also to those who are of the faith of Abraham, who is the father of us all. Verse 17, let's read together. As it is written, I have made you a father of many nations in the presence of him whom he believed God, uh -huh, who gives life to the dead and cause those things which do not exist as Verse 18, please focus from these 18 to 21 down. One, two, three, go. Who contrary to hope in all belief, so that he became. Uh -huh. Please give me this in KJV. Let's read 18 in KJV. Let's read in KJV. Can we read together? Who against hope believed. Let's read together. One, two, go. Who against hope believed in hope that he might become. That he might become. Become, he might become the father uh -huh, according to that which was spoken, so shall thy should be. 19. And be not weak in faith, he considered not his own body now dead when he was about a hundred years old, neither yet the deadness of Sirazum. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So, these few verses we have read make reference to the life of the man called Abraham. Are we together? I want to analyze that. Now, if you look at verse 18, the Bible says, He believed to become. He believed to become. Who against all believed in hope that he might. So, he, Abraham believed. His belief brought him to that point that he became. Now, the word become there is from the root word to be made or to turn into. That means that when Abraham believed, there was this transformation that happened to him. That brought him into the original program of God. Abraham used his faith to be made into something. That is what it means. That who against hope believed in hope. Do you know the meaning of that? Because as far as Abraham was concerned, at this point it was 100 years. Two major limitations Abraham had. Number one is the limitation of Time was against him. Are we together? Because this scripture might be explaining some of us. Time was already against Abraham. It was 100 years. And at this point, no child. No child. He's 75 years, 100 years, no child. So if you look at Abraham from the lens of time, no more hope. No more hope. Not just that. Number two, Bible says that Abraham's body was dead. There can't be a performance. So when it comes to time, time is against him. When it comes to his body, his body is not potent to produce. But don't know what Bible says about Abraham. Bible says in verse 18, he hoped against hope. It means that even in hopeless situation, he still hope. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? Imagine somebody... Whose two legs, somebody who had an accident, who had an accident and they cut and the accident cut his two legs off. And from the point of accident, he said, please take me to a shoe shop. I want to go and buy a new shoe. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? I'm using that. Now, number one disadvantage of Abraham was that time was no longer on his side. Time was no longer on his side. Under the years, no child. But the Bible says he still hope against hope. 
who against hope believed in hope. He has that confidence that, ah, ah eh, I know I'm late, but uh, the, the promise of God still stands. Eh, I know that time has passed. Everybody, in fact, all my friends' children, they have given back to children's children. And I'm still without a child. The Bible says, Abraham hope against hope. Listen to this. Anytime you get to such a point in your life, the faith God is introducing you to is the faith to become. Is the faith to become. When you are trusting God for something, you've, la- you've done everything you could do. You fasted, you have prayed, you have sown seed. It does not mean that that thing you are trusting God for will not happen. What God is trying to do is that he wants to make you to become the one that can handle what he has for you. Listen, there's a difference between the faith for forgiveness of sin and the faith to becoming the righteousness of God. There is a difference between the faith for faith for healing and the faith to become healthy. There is a difference between the faith to trust God for your house rent and the faith to become a wealthy man. Do you understand what I'm saying? So let me ask you, what faith are you practicing? Because some of us, the faith you need now, now, is the faith to receive 200,000 air. But there is a higher dimension of that faith, which is you becoming a wealthy man that can produce millionaires. You don't understand what I'm saying. What I'm saying is that there is receiving, there is becoming. Becoming is greater than receiving. Lord, I want you to give me a guy. God said, no, yes, I'm going to give you a guy. But I'm interested in you becoming the one that mentor guys. A guy went to his friend and he said, please, friend, I'm hungry. I've not eaten since two days ago. The guy said, no problem. Give him a fish. He ate and he went away. Two days after, the guy came back again. He said, my friend, I'm still hungry. He said, what do you want from me? He said, I'm hungry. Give him a fish. Then a day after, he came back again. Then his wife called him. He said, you have not been smart, my husband. He said, instead of you asking this man for a fish, why can't you ask him to make you one that can fish? So that you wouldn't, you know, economists told us that human wants are what? Unlimited. You will keep going back. You will keep, and that is why many people kept coming to the altar. The reason they are coming to God is because of needle. Lord, give me a car. Then when the car is produced, there must be another need. Lord, give me a house. When the house is given, another one. God, give me a wife. And you will, you will keep coming. But I'm saying that there is a faith that you can be exposed to that will make you. There is a making part. There is a making dimension to faith. Do you understand what I'm saying? So if your faith is only for Isaac, because let me say this to you. The promise of God is not just only for things. The promise of God is in making you. So what Abraham, Abraham, I didn't say Abraham, what Abraham was asking God for, he was trusting God for, was what? And what God wanted from him is to be what? Father of many nations. If all you are asking God for is Isaac, you will get Isaac. But if all you are asking God for is to make you father of many nations, you have more than Isaac. Do you understand what I'm saying? Instead of asking God, instead of disturbing heaven, Lord, my school fees is due. Lord, why can't you ask God for the idea that can produce wealth in you? You don't understand what I'm saying. So, the promise of God to Abraham was that, Abraham, my original plan for you is to make you a father of many nations. That's my plan. That's my plan. That will change the entire game if you can shift from faith for receiving to faith to becoming. In the midst of this, in the midst of the problem of the hardship of trouble, of um, the delay of the denial, whatever you call it, of Abraham, God still came and made promises. God didn't say, I will give you a son. God didn't tell Abraham, I will give you a son. He said, I have made you a father. Not just a father 
of many nations. That's why I always tell you, God will not tell you and God will not define you based on your present state. God will define you based on his art state. So there's a way God sees you. And any time the promise of God will come to you, it will come from that plane, from that platform. Are we together? Look at Genesis 17. I'm still coming there. Anyway, you have jumped. You have jumped. You, you are in my heart. We are going to read from verse 4 to 6. So God did not promise him a son. The word made. Okay, let's read together. He said, as for me, behold, my covenant is what is with you. And thou shalt be. Someone say, thou shalt be. A what? Give me new KJV. As for me, behold, my covenant is with you. And you shall be. And you shall. Please talk to me now. Uh -huh. You shall what? You shall what? Please talk to me now. You shall what? Present, past, future. Future. So when God speaks to you, it will look like future things. You shall be. I will make you. Now, let's look at verse 5. Don't forget that. No longer your name be called Abraham, but your name. For I have present, past, future. I can't hear you. So you see the way God is speaking. God said, Abraham, I have made you. You shall be. You don't understand. So the journey between I have made you and you shall be. That process is called faith. Go back to verse 4. He says, as for me, capital me, my, me, God, behold, my covenant is with you. See after me. Say, the covenant of God is with me. He said, and you shall be a father. So God didn't tell Abraham, you are going to be the father of Isaac. You are going to be the father of Ishmael. No. God's plan will be too weak if the only thing God is telling you is that you are going to get married. That's a very weak plan. If that's the knowledge of God's plan for your life, and God's plan is I'm going to have a good life. Ah, there is more to God than all that. If all God is telling you is that, um, um, I want to give you a big bakery. If that's the totality of what God will tell you, that's a small plan. God said, you shall be a father of many nations. So when God is declaring his promises to you, at the point you are, is a future thing. That means that is what you should keep seeing. That is what you should keep beholding. That is what you should keep focusing on. That is what should be your gaze. That is who you are becoming. But as far as I'm concerned in verse 5, I have made you. He said, for I have made you a father, not the father of Isaac. I have made you a great man. I have made you a wealthy woman. I have made you. That is already settled with God. It is called the predestined plan of God. He has made. That's why I always say that everything God will do, he has done. You will now come into the knowledge of what he has done and journey to become. That's why I said the greatest journey you can venture to in life is the journey of becoming who God wants, who God already made you. Let me say that again. The greatest journey you can embark on as a believer is the journey to becoming who God has already made you. So you have time to say he has made me. Please talk to me now. I'm not saying he has made you glad, though. Uh, he has made me glad. That's his song. I'm saying that according to his original plan. For example, we are building a cathedral. As far as God is concerned, the cathedral has been built. That cathedral has been built before we even started the Life World Church. Before you think of joining, the cathedral has been built. But as we begin to journey in life, we come to the knowledge of what he had done. We pick that signal and begin to make decision based on that to come to the point of what he has done. So when we get to that point of that day of dedication, say, God has done it. No, he has not done it. He did it. 
Because God has done it is that he's just, he just did it. Or he's just doing it. He has what? Including your marriage. Including your husband. Your children. He has. So he said, Abraham, he said, for I have what? So after me, say past tense. Look at verse 6. This one, I love this one. Can we read together? Uh -huh. Thank you. Present, past, future. Say after me, say continuous tense. I can't hear you. What is me of more? I will. It's continuous now. So you see three journeys there. Past. What God already finished. Future, where you are coming to. Continuous tense, where you are, to where you are going to. Because the journey of God is not you going back. Do you understand what I'm saying? Do you understand what I'm saying? So this is God. He has made you here. Bam. He has made you here. Get me a board and a marker. Let me draw something for you. Sometimes say he has made me. Ah, he has made you. If you understand this, then you understand what we talk, what we talk about faith to become. Let me pray for you. In the name of Jesus, you will become who God wants you to become. Amen. You will become it. Amen. You will become. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. So if you can, if you understand this, Genesis chapter 17, verse 4 to 6. Then you are good. You will understand that program. So God said, Abraham, this is you. So this is God. God designed Abraham. He said, Abraham, I have made you. Where did God made him? Before the foundation of the earth. He has made him. Do you understand what I'm saying? God already made you wealthy. But now, you are not, you don't have money in your account. That's why I say that your present state does not accurately define you. What accurately defines you is that knowledge of God about you. So God said, Abraham, I have made you. This is you, Abraham. This is 20... 24 April. So, this is where you are. The promise of God, when God makes promises, the promise of God is to bring you to the knowledge of this so that you can become this. Do you understand what I'm saying? So, this is where you are. So, when God speaks to you, God does not speak to you from here. God speak to you from here. You don't understand? From here. This is eternity past. Do you understand what I'm saying? This is where God programmed. Before I informed you, I knew you. So he has already done everything here. So when you were born, you were born here. As you begin to journey, some of you, you will come to the plan of God at age 27 years. Some, some people, 64. Some people, 92. The choice is yours. Whichever one. So, at this point, revelation hits you. Or, the promise of God comes to you. The promise of God at this point is to bring you to the knowledge of what he did here. Which is to bring you here. Do you understand? So, God said to Abraham here, that Abraham, from before you were born, I already made you. That's what he's saying. Well, before you were, now, Abraham here, 100 years. When you were minus 100, eh, I have made you the father of many nations. This is in eternity. Now, when you now step into time, year one, you are now one year old. You didn't know that. Then you begin to journey, you begin to journey, you begin, then you now get here. At age 27, you thought you'll have had a child. No. You started praying. No, what's all this nonsense now? Hey, God, I don't have a child. You know, and let me say this to you. Most of the times when you are asking God for something about your matter of destiny, you know God's response? 
Can I shock you? God's response is the, the knowledge of his promises to you. So you are praying. Father, it's time to be married. Maraza prekezozo prekediskaba. And you are praying in tongues. Five days, seven days, one year, two years. And the only thing God is giving you is vision, 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 vision. Ah, no, what's the vision? His vision and husband today sound alike. As far as God is concerned, you know what God is doing? God will keep bringing to you the knowledge of his promises to you. That promise happened here. That promise happened here. That promise will reveal this. So for Joseph, when Joseph was here, when Joseph was here, he had a dream of this place which was already done here. Not that while he was here, God would not be planning, okay, for example, Chooks now. God would not be saying, okay, now, maybe Chooks is now praying, Father, give me a lady, give me a lady. God would not say, oh, that guy is praying, he's praying. what will I do? Mm. Ah, this, that guy is going to like a fair lady that is fat. Romu, romu girl. Let me give her a girl, let me give her a girl. And God will not be looking at the population of the world. Hey, we, uh, uh, there's one chair, maka, chair, maka, chair, maka, chair, maka. You know, eh, eh, that's, not, that's not how God programs it. From here, from here, Chia Maka has been programmed. Do you understand? So when it was one year, Chia Maka has been programmed. GS1, Chia Maka is there. On the level, Chia Maka, she's working, he's working, Chia Maka, he becomes pastor. Chia Maka is there, but he's not seen Chia Maka. So our focus is, Lord, Chia Maka, Chia Maka, Chia Maka, Chia Maka, Chia Maka. But the only lady she has been seeing is Chima. Chizom. Those are the only ones she's seen. He's seen. But God, do you understand what I'm trying to say? So God will now, the more he now keeps praying, you know what God will be showing him? God will not be showing him his wedding day. I'm still single. And I said, Pastor, I had a dream. You know, in that dream, I saw a lady where I was doing wedding, but I didn't see her face. And God said, eh, I have done that. That's what I'm trying to tell you. You know, some of you, some of the things God is telling you, God is trying to encourage you that, don't worry. That thing you're asking, it has been settled. What you should focus on is you. My worry, my worry. Do you understand what I'm saying? For example, if you be now saying, ah, I, want to, I don't want to give out to a big girl. I want to boy first. And the guy to say, I want to boy first. And God has said, oh, they told me, mm, I have programmed boy, 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 boy. Do you understand what I'm saying? He has programmed boy, boy, boy. That boy is David. You know, this one is giving back to David. He's also giving back to David. So, he's David, he's David. So, as they are arguing, arguing, God said, I have finished the plan here. The plan has been set to here. So, then, he will not begin, she will not begin to have a dream that... She's taking her son for wedding. We are. I'm not married. My son is not getting married. That is how God operates. God does not operate from your level. So he said, I will make you exceedingly fruitful. Ah. But look at verse 1. He said, I have made you a father. So, and that's why at times when the promise of God comes, like you feel bad. Ah. Okay, you have made me, I am poor. You said you have made me. You, be, uh, you have made me rich now. Oh, yeah, uh, there's no money. Because, and the fact that you are hungry does not change that he has made you. He has made you. If you decide to become a Babala worshiper today, it does not change the fact that he has made you. He has made you. <laughs> Do you understand what I'm saying? That is not say, um... I'm not marrying Brochi Amaka again. It does not change. I'm saying it. It does not change the fact that he has made you. So he said, and you shall be a father. KJV. I didn't say KJV. I said KJV. He said, I have made you. He said, I have made you a father of many nations. Thou shall be. Verse 5. Are you blessed this evening? Yeah. If you understand what I just explained, you are blessed. He now said, neither shall thy name no more be called Abraham, but thy name shall be what? Because you will deny the reality of what God has ordained for you if what you bear is against what he has ordained. If what God has ordained for you, what you are answering to is against it, you can't become it. That's what the Bible says. Let the weak say. Let the poor say. 
God has made you rich, you're now saying that I don't have money. That means you are denying this plan. You are denying it. So if you are going to take steps, you are going to take steps based on what? That is what we call faith. So it means that you can't really operate in faith if you don't have the knowledge of this. You can't come here. So you can't just go, hey, I want to have faith for one billion. Hey, hey, you must know what you must know. So as we begin to take steps, do you understand what I'm saying? If God has ordained you a billionaire and you want to make a vow, you can make a vow of 10 million. You know why you're going to do that? You are going to do that because you have the knowledge. Pastor, but I have 2,000. Eh, I've dropped 1,000 out of it. And it's a sign that I believe that. It, do you understand what I'm saying? Do you understand what I'm saying? So, you will, listen to what I'm about to say. You will be because you have been made. You will be this because you have been made. Say after me, say, I will be because I have been made. Say after me, say, he has made me blessed, great, righteous. He has made you. Your destiny is in the future, but God's assignment was in the past. What is your destiny? And this is, also, this is what we call future, right? Future. Future. So you can see the journey. You can see the journey. You can see the journey. It's a straight line journey. This is where God programmed your life. How many of you have heard people say that life begins from the point of your discovery of your purpose? Uh, that's when life begins. So some of you, maybe it's age five, age four. That's where your life begins. So maybe so whatever this might be, that age. So, from here, and whatever you are trusting God for, it's going to be in between that. Too. In between what he has programmed and fulfillment. So, at this point, this one is where God planned your life. Are we together? This age one, age two, age three, age four, age five, age six, 90. This point, eh? this is a point I call fulfillment. This is where everybody is coming to. Right. There must be a point in your life that you must come to the knowledge of this plan. To come to the knowledge of this plan, God brings to you promise. So, if you are 24 years, 24 years, this is when you come to the knowledge of God's promises. The promise of God will show you this based on this. Do you understand what I'm saying? The promise of God will show you that I will make you because I have made you. The reason, so what gives me the confidence that I will be great is that you already made me. That was what happened to Abraham. So he went back and said, and Abraham hoped against hope. Even though time passed, his body was dead. He didn't even consider the body of Sarah because of verse 4, 5, 6. Because God made him. God told him he will be made. He believed. That's what that scripture says that Abraham hoped against hope. So you can't tell me I will not be wealthy. The reason you can't tell me is that it is too late for you to tell me. Because he made me. So you can't just say he made us. Because some of us, we have not come to the knowledge of that. So let me ask you this evening. What is it about you that God has said to you? All of us can say, ah, he has made me great. When did he tell you? How did he tell you? What did he tell you? Yes, it's true. He has made you great. Eh, kill us off when. Bishop Edeko stood up one day. He said, I can never be poor. You can also say it. If you say it, you might end poor. And because you didn't come to the knowledge or to the revelation of that. So at this point, the promise of God comes here. 
then, listen to me. The moment you come to the knowledge of the promise of God, eh, to the point of fulfillment, you will need to travel by the vehicle called faith. That faith will now begin to work in you. It begins to run a program in you to make you. Then you eventually become who God. So you get to the point like, wow, I'm now a father of many nations. Uh, time is just validating that, but it has already been validated a long time that you're a father. Do you understand what I'm saying? So, let me say this. Abraham now got to a point that he was in between the physical reality and God's reality. Listen, everybody, we always get to that point in our life. You come to a point, you will come in between physical reality and God's reality. Physical reality is the state of things now. God's reality is the reality based on God's angle. Are we together? And you must make a choice. You must what? Or you must choose one. You must choose one. So as you are seated here, you're in your account, you have 200 naira. That is the physical reality. That is what is happening. That is your state now. But God's reality is that you are going to lend to many nations. Can you see in between the two? Now, which one will you hold on to? Now, it is very sweet to say it's God's reality. The way you are acting and behaving, you are behaving like someone who held on to. So we ask you, how much do you have? You tell me, Pastor, I have 200 naira. You are working based on physical reality. Ah, why, 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 why are you dull? Pastor, because you love me, physical reality. Why are you not? Do you understand what I'm trying to say? Uh, physical reality. But faith will take you to that point. The Bible says he hoped against hope. He didn't consider. Look at that scripture. Give me back that scripture. He said, um, and who against hope believed in hope that he might become. That's the journey. That, ah, uh, because the journey to become what he made you is that you have to keep believing in hope. I believe. You know, have you heard parents that say that, uh, they say Nigeria, one day go better, you go better, you go better. No, it never better. You know why it never better? Because that word was not predicated on what God said. How many of the parents told you that, ah, my dear, God told us that Nigeria will be better. It was government that told you that it go better. And the words of men will fail. Who against hope believed in hope that he might become the father of God according to that which was something must be spoken to you. Verse 19. Something must be spoken to you. And be not weak. Somebody said, I must not be weak. Because the physical reality will weaken your faith. He considered. Can you see? He was, his body was there though. He said he didn't consider it. And my body, you don't understand what I'm saying? That you have 200 naira and you embark on a project of 30 million. That means you are not considering your post now. That's the meaning. So when I ask some young guys, why are you not married? They say, there is no money. I know that they want to run that marriage from their senses. Not by faith. There is no money. Hey, oh, that's what I used to tell you. When I was planning for my wedding, say, I had 265 naira. That was a journey of faith. A journey of faith. He did not consider. I can consider my pause. Because if I consider my pause, I will not be able to do it. I can consider... If I consider my health, I should not preach today. Do you understand what I'm saying? I've been on drugs. I've been on bed. You know, some of you tell me, Pastor, I won't be able to come to church today. I will just smile at times. Even when I was driving to church, I was, I was, my body was weak. I've been, since Monday, I've been, I've been down. But if I consider my body, I actually wanted to delegate today's service to someone to preach. I said, no, because of, well, because of what? Bible says, he cons somebody say, I will consider not. So if that's why you have, not, you, have not, you have not stepped into certain projects. You are considering the economy. You are considering, uh, Pastor, I don't have anybody to help me. You are considering physical things. And they will always bring limitation. It will always bring limitation. It will always bring limitation. 
I told somebody, I said, you don't know that the land breaking we had was a miracle. You didn't know. What I did was, I fixed the date. Bam! Then we started running. As small as what you saw on that ground, you don't know that, that what you saw was in hundreds of thousands. When I mean hundreds of thousands. If I consider the pause, we won't do it. I'll be waiting for when money will come. Are we together? I called, I called the guy. I said, how much do we need next? He said, we need 1.2 million. I said, 1.2. I said, okay. What do we need to buy? I said, give me the list. He said, ah, pastor. So I said, no, you resume. You resume on Thursday morning. The guy didn't know what I was planning to do. That the little money I have, I will go and buy. Out of, imagine, imagine you need to buy 40, 40 things. You now buy one. And the only money you have is to buy one. So when he now gets out, and be using this one. Say so this one will finish under five minutes and let it finish. And that is faith. Bible says he considered not his own body, which is now dead. That body cannot perform. He said he didn't consider it. That is the faith I'm talking to you about. Do you understand? Everybody is traveling now. They are not making it. They say, me? I'm not going to consider the economy. The economy will not determine what I will do. The, eco- the present state of economy is the physical reality. But I'm not going to do that. He said when he was about, and what? Imagine a hundred year old man. We still trusting God for a child. You don't understand what I'm saying. Until you get to that level of hundred. Neither yet the what? Sarah's womb was already dead. You know what he's saying? He still did not cons. So many things he did. Number one, he didn't consider his body dead. Number two, he didn't consider his age. Number three, he didn't consider the deadness of the womb of Sarah. Verse 20. I love this one. Someone say staggered not. Are they what? You know, you have stagger. He was not flinching, stood this ground. Everything can crumble. He said, no, God said it. How many of you have got it to that point? That not, nothing moves me. God said it. He said. All this one you are still doing, you are still singing. God said it. I believe it. That says this. Is. When, when certain thing hits you, walk back with God said it. Babu says, he staggered not at the promise of God. The only way we stagger at the promise of God is unbelief. Hey, hey, me man, God said, I'm going to give, hey, a father of many nations. I don't have one yet. Hey, you didn't, you didn't consider that. I told the guy yesterday when we were chatted. I said, I'm not going to change the date of our dedication. It's still that same day. I said, if the present state, we are still there two days to that day. I said, I will still not stagger. If that morning, the dedication is 5 p.m., 9 a.m., I still not stagger. I will not. And if that time passed, it does not mean that God is a liar. Faith. Staggered not. And that one's not faith for things. That is faith that makes you. That you can get to a point you believe God for anything. I didn't say everything. No. Some say anything. How many of you trust God for anything? You can easily raise your hand. But when the reality comes, you know that. Ah. Mm. Sister Bisa has gotten married. She's my friend. Glory to God. Staffy B is married. I'm still single. Glory to God. Sister is married. I'm still single. Glory to God. That means get married. Uh, glory to God. Everybody's getting married. Motush. Glory to God. And you still be rejoicing with them. And nothing is making you feel bad. And you're like, ah, ah Staffy B, let me be your best lady. You can't be my best lady. Glory to God. Ah, Sister, let me be your best lady. And she's there celebrating with everybody. Doing, working for everybody. And she's serving. And she's not feeling bad. She didn't go home and say, hmm. My show. And started singing fully song. Ibolo ju rewa. Ba wo ni ki inti she. Do you understand? Abraham had hope when it was hopeless. Hmm? So the faith I'm talking about is the faith that will make you to be. So after me say, I don't have money, but I will be. You don't understand what I'm saying? The faith that Abraham hoped against hope means that I don't have a child, but I will be. 
I'll be what? Father of many nations. There is something God has made you that you must become. You must what? Many of us focus on those items, not on the person. So this journey of verse 18 to 20 is the process that you go through. God wants you to become great, mighty, blessed, wealthy. There is a faith to receive one thing from God. There is also a faith to becoming. The faith to becoming is a great faith. It's a great faith. As far as God is concerned, he wants you to be. That's why you will pray. You just go that. Ah, ah, this is not really, there is something God wants. Some of you, what, maybe what faith wants to work out in you is just a simple word called patience. And you can be in that class for five years. Lord, God, I can be, uh, some of you, maybe what God wants to work in you is just a simple word called anger. 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 Because God knows the effect of that anger, that that anger will destroy the blessing you're asking for. So before I put the blessing in your hands, let me work on anger in you. By the time you are now made, then the blessing comes cheaply. For the prodigal son, what God wanted to work in his life is the spirit of waste. Just waste. Some of you don't know you are a waster. You don't know you are a waster when there is scarcity. You know that you are a waster when there is what? Surplus. That's when you will know. When your, now that your salary is 45000 you know how inconsistent you are, even with tight. You know. So, trusting God. God can open some doors, though, and you will give him thanks. Lord, I want to thank you, but let me shock you that that's not the best God wants to actually give to you. There is more. But God knows that the moment he exposes you to that job, that job becomes the tool for not coming to church again. Before that time, you were coming. I ah, very active. You know, I told them, I said, never get to that point where what you were, what used to bring you to God now becomes an excuse that takes you away from God. Many people that come to church, they will come very early because they are trusting God for husband. They will come, sweep, do everything, join choir, join protocol. They were doing everything, oh, you know, because of a child, because of a boy. Now, they've gotten the boy. And I said, Lord, ah, is the boy, is the baby? God said, is the baby, Abby? Let me take the baby away then. Do you understand what I'm saying? When you don't have money, you knew the way you were praying. You knew the way you were going on retreat. You need to serve God. You need the way you were so passionate. Now, small change, don't do your hand. When you don't have a car, you leave home one hour before service. Now you have a car. Ten minutes, I will drive to church. Ten minutes. Five minutes, I will run. I will run. I will run. Two minutes. <laughs> you want to fly? <laughs> Everyone. Someone said, God wants to make me. How many of you believe that God wants to make you? What I'm saying is not that God cannot give you. What are you trusting God for? Let God make you. If God made you, see that you're asking for. Yafu, yafu. By the time you are made, 15 brothers can come to you in one hour. Ah. Pastor, nobody's coming. Ah, uh ah, -uh, sister, don't worry. By the time God is done, I'm going to pastor here. Hey, Egdami, Jubril, James, Jacob, Jeremiah, Jerome, Jeshron, Jaskeb. Pastor, which one? It's because you have been made. And because your season has come. There is a faith to get things. There is a faith to become. The faith to become what I'm saying is that the faith to become will take you through a process. That process is not going to be easy. It's a, it's a process that will subject you to patience. It's a process that will subject you to waiting. It's a process you will learn to hear God. It's a process that will make you to be established in conviction. How many of you have gone to that point? Like, ah, did God actually said it? I don't think God said it. Uh, 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 uh. God told me that uh, Brotos is my husband now. Now he's married. And God might begin, to, God might want to take you to a point or might take you to a season of what we call clarity. 
So the problem with many people is that when they get to the verge of breakthrough, they staggered. One of the things I want, to, I, I want to encourage you with today is that when you have the promise of God, don't stagger. Stagger not. Stagger not. Stagger not at the promise of God. The word of God doesn't fail. Though. The word of God does not fail. Father, we thank you for your word tonight. We give you all the glory. Thank you for bringing this word into our spirit. Thank you because we hope in your word. We believe your word. And we know that your word is true. Father, we ask that you help us in this journey of faith that we will become who you want us to become in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Somebody shout aloud, amen. amen. I can't hear you. Amen. Are you blessed tonight? Yeah. Simple, right? Simple, right? But powerful. All right, let me give us this few announcements, please. I would like every one of us to please take note of these few announcements. On Sunday, Sunday is going to be a great service. And please, I want to encourage you, don't miss Sunday service. Some of us, we don't invite people. It's a bad, it's a bad attitude. Though. It's a bad, actually, but when last did you invite somebody to church? Some people have never, once in their life. Once is a bad attitude. Yeah. If you are really born again, you will never hide your faith. I'm telling you the truth. All right. Um, also, Singles and Married Conference is coming up in the month of April. That's next week. So next week, next week Saturday, um, Single and Married Conference. We have Pastor Shufora, Joshua Mike Bamiloe, myself, my wife. So please don't miss that conference. And what we are doing is I want everybody. We are not printing banners. We are not printing flyers for this conference. But I know that this place will be jam-packed. So everybody, we have been saddled with that responsibility to invite as many for this conference. You know, please, I want to encourage everybody. We have the flyers online on our platforms. Beyond that, invite people one-on-one. -on -one, call people one-on-one -on -one to be part of this conference. Please, I want to beg you, please invite everybody to be part of this conference. And it's going to be of tremendous blessing to us. So we'll be talking about, we'll be talking about destiny, we'll be talking about marriage, relationship, love, whatever. So please, I want to encourage us, make sure you are part of this great program. And I know God will help us in the name of Jesus. All right. Um, I forgot to announce on Sunday, um, this Saturday, 6.30 a.m., we'll be having Peniel. Sorry, I didn't announce that on Saturday. So Saturday, Saturday, 6.30 a.m., we'll be having panel on Saturday. So please, let's try as much. It's going to be a great meeting. I will share the flyer so that it will carry the focus for that meeting. Like I said, our faith is not only for becoming, it's also for receiving. So we are also trusting God. We are going to, we are going to receive. We'll be receiving from God. Let's package our offering tonight. And um, let's give unto the Lord. Let's give unto the Lord. Let's give unto the Lord. Father, we thank you um, for this that you have given to us. Thank you for your blessings. Thank you for blessing us with this gift. Father, we ask tonight that you increase us and you will multiply us in the name of Jesus. Let your name be glorified. Lord, we ask that you will bless every one of us in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. All right, let's cast our offering. Then the final announcement, um, I want to appreciate everybody who made it to the land-breaking service on Sunday. It was a great time, and we give God all the glory. Thank you so much for the sacrifice so far, for giving, commitment, and for encouragement, you know. Thank you. Divine has been encouraging me. Thank you for encouragement. Thank you for words. Thank you for sacrifice. But you should know that it's just the beginning. You know, it's just the beginning. We have a lot to go. So since Monday, we couldn't do anything on Sunday, yesterday, and today because of funds. So we are trusting God to push the work further. So I want to encourage everybody, as much as God has blessed you, you know, in hundreds of thousands, in millions, in tens of thousands, please um, don't hesitate. Don't wait that, uh, uh, that I want to accumulate it. Be it like that. You know, we need to, we have a target date we are working with. We need to start casting the foundation now and the buildings to start rising. So please, as much as God has blessed you, um, please, let's, let's do that. And, um, and I want to encourage every one of us to be part of 
that great work. Look at your neighbor. Say, neighbor, there is a faith to become who God wants you to become. Say, neighbor, you will be what he has made you. Look at your neighbor. Say, neighbor, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance amongst them which are sanctified. Shout it loud, amen. All right, God bless you. Have a wonderful day.